the I. Miscellaneous Topics Feminization of Agriculture Sector Economic Survey 2017 to 18 says that with growing rural to urban migration by men, there is feminization of agriculture sector, with increasing number of women in multiple roles as cultivators, entrepreneurs, and laborers. Globally, there is empirical evidence that women have a decisive role in ensuring food security and preserving local agro-biodiversity. Rural women are responsible for the integrated management and use of diverse natural resources to meet the daily household needs. This requires that women farmers should have enhanced access to resources like land, water, credit, technology and training which warrants critical analysis in the context of India. In addition, the entitlements of women farmers will be the key to improve agriculture productivity. The differential access of women to resources like land, credit, water, seeds and markets needs to be addressed. Towards this, government has been implementing various schemes which help improve the entitlements of women farmers, which will prove to be advantageous in bridging the policy gaps which exits in the sector. The following measures have been taken to ensure mainstreaming of women in agriculture sector, earmarking at least 30% of the budget allocation for women beneficiaries in all ongoing schemes slash programs and development activities. Initiating women-centric activities to ensure benefits of various beneficiary-oriented programs slash schemes reach them. Focusing on women self-help group SHG to connect them to microcredit through capacity building activities and to provide information and ensuring their representation in different decision making bodies. Recognizing the critical role of women in agriculture, the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare has declared 15th October of every year as Women Farmers Day. With women predominant at all levels production, pre-harvest, post-harvest processing, packaging, marketing, of the agricultural value chain, to increase productivity in agriculture, it is imperative to adopt gender-specific interventions. An inclusive transformative agricultural policy should aim at gender-specific intervention to raise productivity of small farm holdings, integrate women as active agents in rural transformation, and engage men and women in extension services with gender expertise. Economic survey expresses concern over air pollution. The survey expresses concern over air pollution in Delhi with the onset of winter due to various factors. Reasons, it ascribes for main reasons for Delhi's worsening air quality. 1. Crop residue, biomass burning, vehicular emissions and redistributed road dust, industries, power plants. 2. Winter temperature inversion. 3. Humidity. And 4. Absence of wind. Suggestion. It suggests that the solution is to address each source problem systematically, coordination between agencies and central and state governments and sustained civic engagement. Short-term emergency plan The short-term emergency plan is to be implemented when 24 hour PM 2.5 exceeds 300 for 00 G slash M3, including imposing heavy penalties on burning of agricultural waste, using satellite-based tools to detect fires, payment of incentives to farmers, medium and long-range actions the medium and long-range actions include implementing congestion pricing for vehicles improving public transport system and expanding modernized bus fleets phasing out old vehicles and accelerating BSVI use of technology the survey also notes the use of technology to convert agricultural waste into usable fodder or biofuels and provide incentives to shift to non paddy crops and as a point in case quotes the straw management system for rice and wheat farming as an example it also mentions the happy cedar machine that sows seeds without removing paddy straw and suggests that such a technological solution must be combined with economics by providing incentives to center and states and should be implemented through agricultural cooperatives and local bodies. It mentions the adverse impact of indoor pollution on women and children, adding that access to modern energy sources can reduce the amount of time spent on collective of firewood as well as lead to a positive impact on the education and employment of girls. India's commitment to climate change of climate change survey states that India has strengthened its response to the threat of climate change in accordance with the principles of equity and common but differentiated responsibilities and in the light of national circumstances with the Paris pledge to reduce the emission intensity of GDP by 33 to 35 percent over 2005 levels by the year 2030. Unsustainable Development Survey says that India's urban population is projected to grow to about 600 million by 2031. 
It suggests that urban local bodies generate resources through financial instruments such as municipal bonds, PPPs and credit risk guarantees. The survey says that access to sustainable, modern and affordable energy is the basis of achieving sustainable development goals. Stating that as on 30 of November 2017, the share of renewable energy sources was 18% in the total installed capacity of electricity in the country and that the increasing share of renewables has tripled in the last 10 years. Establishment of a global technology watch groups outlining India's commitment to address climate change. The survey mentions establishment of a global technology watch groups extending climate change action program launched in 2014 for the period 2017 to 18 to 2019 to 20 with a budget outlay of Rs. 132.4 crore and continuation of national adaption fund on climate change till 31st March 2020 with financial implication of Rs. 364 crore. Agricultural R&D needed to sustain agricultural productivity growth agricultural R&D is the main source of innovation which is needed to sustain agricultural productivity growth in the long term. The survey says that the actual expenditure of Department of Agricultural Research and Education slash Indian Council of Agricultural Research has increased from Rs. 5,393 crore in 2010 to 11 to Rs. 6,800B crore during 2017 to 18. The compound annual growth rate of expenditure has been 4.2% over the years and in recent years expenditure has been on higher side. Growth in agriculture R&D, during the current year 2017-18 investment in agriculture research and education protected new agricultural innovation by filling 45 patent applications at Indian Patent Office IPO and the cumulative patent applications have now risen to 1,025. 10 copyright and 12 trademark applications were filed by ICAR for products and processes. After the protection of plant varieties and farmers right authority notified new genera, applications for 135 varieties were filed at the registry and 155 high yielding varieties slash hybrids of cereals were released for cultivation in different agroecologies of the country during 2016, the economic survey adds. Economic survey says that total 209 new varieties slash hybrids tolerant to various biotic and abiotic stresses with enhanced quality have been developed for cereals, pulses, oil seeds, commercial and forage crops. Cereals, 117 high yielding varieties slash hybrids of cereals comprising 65 of rice, 14 of wheat, 24 of maize, 5 of finger millet, 3 of pearl millet, 1 each of sorghum, bark, Foxtail millet, cocoa millet, little millet and proso millet were released for cultivation in different agroecologies of the country during 2017. Oil seeds, 28 high yielding oil seeds varieties comprising 8 of rape seed mustard, 5 of soybean, for each of ground nut and linseed, 3 of sunflower, to each of castor and niger were released for different agroecological regions. Pulses, 32 high yielding varieties of pulses comprising 10 of chickpea, 6 of lentil, 4 of cowpea, 3 of mung bean, 2 each of pigeon payot, horse gram and field pea, 1 each of urt bean, rajmash and fava bean were released for different agroecological region. Commercial crops, 24 high yielding varieties for commercial crops including 13 of cotton, 8 of sugar cane and 3 of jute were released for different agroecological regions. Forage crops, 8 high yielding varieties slash hybrids of forage crops comprising 3 F oats, 1 each of Batro, Napier hybrid, forage sorghum, grain amaranthus, forage cowpea and marble grass were released for cultivation in different agroecologies. From UPSC perspective, the following topics are important for the exam. 1. Prathan Mantri F. Savama Yojana PMF DE2. Electronic National Agriculture Market Enom 3. Interest Subvention for Kisan Credit Card KCC 5 Soil Health Card 6 Input Management 7 Per Drop More Crop in Prathan Mantri Krishi Sanchai Yojana PM KZ Social Issues Combating Antimicrobial Resistance AMR in India About Antimicrobial Resistance AMR Antimicrobial Resistance AMR occurs when microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, Fungi and parasites change in ways that render the medications used to cure the infections they cause ineffective. How it occurs? It occurs naturally but is facilitated by the inappropriate use of medicines, 
for example using antibiotics for viral infections such as cold or flu, or sharing antibiotics. Low quality medicines, strong prescriptions and poor infection prevention and control also encourage development and spread of drug resistance. What the report says. World Health Organization's first global report on AMR in 2014 reported that it is not a country-specific issue but a global concern that is jeopardizing global health security. AMR is of particular concern in developing nations, including India, where the burden of infectious diseases is high and healthcare spending is low. The country has among the highest bacterial disease burden in the world. Antibiotics, therefore, have a critical role in limiting morbidity and mortality in the country. Challenges, the challenges associated with controlling antibiotic resistance, particularly in India, are many and multifaceted. On the one hand, antibiotics are necessary in many life-threatening cases. But on the other hand, overuse of antibiotics can be disastrous in the long run. Hence, judicious use of antibiotics is required, but acceptable strategies to achieve this goal and to address the challenges must be devised and awareness needs to be generated among the public. Way ahead. Acknowledging AMR as a serious threat to global public health, India has finalized a comprehensive and multi-sectoral national action plan aligning to the global action plan and adopted a holistic and collaborative approach involving all stakeholders such as UN, WHO, FAO and other UN agencies towards prevention and containment of AMR. Government measures a national action plan has been prepared through extensive national consultations with various stakeholders in alignment with global action plan which has objectives of enhancing awareness, strengthening surveillance, improving rational use of antibiotics, reducing infections and promoting research in India. In addition, India aims to support neighboring countries in collective fight against infectious diseases. The government of India has initiated series of actions including setting up the National Surveillance System for AMR, enacted regulations Schedule H1 to regulate sale of antibiotics, brought out national guidelines for use of antibiotics, etc. However, more efforts are required considering the large size of our country, magnitude of the problem and the fact that AMR needs to be addressed comprehensively under one health approach. The challenge now is in its efficient implementation through a coordinated approach at all levels of use of antibiotics for which all state governments need to develop state-specific action plans. Government programs for women and children in the current financial year 2017-18 to 18, The scope of several existing programs and schemes have been expanded and several new initiatives have been taken up to foster all-round development of women and children in the country. Some of the schemes are mentioned below. Integrated Child Development Services ICD same ICD scheme aims at the holistic development of children up to 6 years of age and to meet nutritional needs of pregnant women and lactating mothers. Newly added schemes recently, rationalization, restructuring and continuation of four child-centric schemes such as Anganwadi services in place of ICD's B scheme for adolescent girls set in place of SAELAC child protection services in place of integrated child protection scheme and D national crash scheme in place of Rajat Gandhi national crash scheme of the ministry under umbrella integrated child development services scheme has been approved by the government. Keeping in line with the Swatch H. Bharat Appian, special emphasis has been given on providing toilet and safe drinking water facility at every Anganwadi center under the restructured Anganwadi Services Scheme. The scheme has been universalized with cumulated approval of 7076 projects and 14 lock Anganwadi centers AWCs including 20,000 Anganwadis on demand. Digitization of Anganwadi Center's AWCs has already begun in eight states with ICDs enabled monitoring of the schemes through smartphones slash tablets to Anganwadi worker and supervisor. A new web portal has been created for enabling the MIS data entry by the state slash UTS. The ministry has taken an initiative to address the micronutrient deficiencies among women and children in the country. In this regard, Fortification of food items with essential micronutrients has been made mandatory in the government-funded nutrition-related schemes. Prahan Mantri Matra Bank Anna Yojana PM MBE the earlier maternity benefit program for the eligible pregnant women and lactating mothers PWMLM has now been named as Prahan Mantri Matra Bank Anna Yojana PM MBE a centrally sponsored scheme in January. 2017 for providing partial compensation for the wage loss in terms of cash incentives so that the woman can take adequate rest before and after delivery of the first child. 
The cash incentive provided would lead to improved health-seeking behavior amongst the PWMLM. The scheme envisages providing cash incentive amounting to Rs 5000 slash in DDV mode during pregnancy and lactation. The remaining cash incentive of Rs 1000 slash is provided towards maternity benefit under JNE Europe Shiyoj and JSE after institutional delivery so that on an average, an eligible women will get Rs 6000 slash National Nutrition Mission Ben Enhem The Government of India has approved setting up of National Nutrition Mission Ben Enhem commencing from 2017 to 18 The NNM, as an apex body, will monitor, supervise, fix targets and guide the nutrition-related interventions across the ministries. The program through the targets will strive to reduce the level of stunting, undernutrition, anemia and low birth weight babies. It will create synergy, ensure better monitoring, Issue alerts for timely action to achieve the targeted goals. Prathan Mantri Ajwala Yojana PM UE PM UE was launched in May 2016 for providing LPG connection to five crore women belonging to the BVL families over a period of three years from 2016 to 17. The scheme aims to safeguard the health of women and children by providing them with a clean cooking fuel, LPG so that they do not have to compromise their health in smoky kitchens or wander in unsafe areas collecting firewood. Since inception, around 3.3 crore LPG connections have already been provided as on 18.01.2018. Economic survey reiterates India's commitment to achieve the targets under SDG3 and to strengthen health delivery systems. The Economic Survey of 2017-18 reiterates India's commitment to achieve the targets under Sustainable Development Goals 3 SDG 3 with some of them also aligned with the National Health Policy 2017. The survey taken note of the shift in the disease burden from communicable diseases to non-communicable diseases in the country between 1990 and 2016. The survey mentions that child and maternal malnutrition continue to be the most challenging risk factor for health loss in India in 2016. The other key risk factors include air pollution, dietary risks, high blood pressure and diabetes etc. The survey taken note of the National Health Policy 2017 which recommended increasing state sector health spending to more than 8% of the state's government budget by 2020. It also takes note of the report India. Health of Nation States 2017, which provides the first comprehensive set of findings for the distribution of diseases and risk factors across all states from 1990 to 2016. The concept of disability adjusted life years dailies has been developed to provide a framework for analyzing the disease burden and risk factors. The survey advocates there is a need to understand the efficiency of public spending with respect to dailies behavior across the major states and to assess whether high spending by states on health results in better health outcomes. The survey notes that there has been significant improvement in the health status of individuals in India as life expectancy at birth has increased by 10 years during the period 1990 to 2015. The survey, however, notes with concern that there are wide differences in the average prices of diagnostic tests across cities which need to be addressed by standardizing rates to reduce out-of-pocket expenses op on health services. According to the survey, the National Health Policy 2017 will help in strengthening health delivery systems and in achieving universal health coverage. Swatch H. Garag Mission Graman The Economic Survey of 2017 to 18 takes note of the basic fact that quality of hygiene and sanitation has significant impact on improving the health outcomes. With the launch of Swatch H. Garag Mission Graman on 2nd October 2014, the sanitation coverage in rural India has increased substantially from 39% in 2014 to 76% in January, 2018. The number of persons defecating in open and rural areas, which were 55 crore in October, 2014 declined to 25 crore in January, 2018. So far, 296 districts and 307,349 villages all over India have been declared open defecation free ODF. Eight states and two union territories, i.e., Sikkim, Himachal Pradesh, Kerala, Kerala, Uttarakhand, Chhattisgarh, Uttarakhand, Pradesh, Gujarat, Daman and Boyu and Chandigarh have been declared as ODF completely. 
The surveys conducted by the National Sample Survey Office NSSO and Quality Council of India QCI on usage of toilets by the individuals who have access to toilets reported more than 90% of individuals using toilets in 2016 and 2017. The survey satisfactorily notes that there has been substantial reduction in the number of persons defecating in open and rural areas which has had positive health and economic impact in ODF areas. In a report, the financial and economic impact of SBM in India, UNICEF estimated that a household in an ODF village in rural India saves Rs 50,000 slash every year. Swatch Bharat Abhiyan The Swatch H Bharat Abhiyan or mission, launched on 2nd of October 2014, is so far the largest program on sanitation by Indian government. It has two submissions this Swatch H Bharat Mission Rural and Swatch H Bharat Mission Urban. While rural mission comes under the purview of Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation, the urban mission comes under Ministry of Urban Development. Key objectives The basic objective is to provide sanitation facilities to every family, including toilets, solid and liquid waste disposal systems, village cleanliness, and safe and adequate drinking water supply by 2nd October, 2019. It will be a befitting tribute to the father of the nation on his 150th birth anniversary. Following that are the some important objectives of the Swatch H. Bharat Abhiyan, to eradicate the system of open defecation in India. To convert the insanitary toilets into port flush toilets. To remove the system of manual scavenging. To make people aware of healthy sanitation practices by bringing behavioral changes in people. To link people with the programs of sanitation and public health in order to generate public awareness. To build up the urban local bodies strong in order to design, execute and operate all systems related to cleanliness. To completely start the scientific processing, disposal for use and recycling the municipal solid waste. To provide required environment for the private sectors to get participated in the capital expenditure for all the operations and maintenance costs related to the clean campaign. Key facts under the program The unit cost of the individual household latrine IHHL has been enhanced from ours. 10,000 to Rs. 12,000 so as to provide for water availability, including for storing, hand washing and cleaning of toilets. Central share for IHHLs to be Rs. 9,075% from Swatch H. Bharat Mission Gradman. The state share to be Rs. 3,025%. For Northeastern states, Jammu and Kashmir and special category states, the central share will be 10,800 and the state shared Rs. 1,290% colon 10%. Additional contributions from other sources will be permitted. Provision to be included in the Indira Awas Yojana program for provision of functional toilets. Discontinue apart funding from MGNREGA for the payment of incentives for the construction of IHHLs and pay the entire amount of government of India share from the Swatch H. Bharat Mission Gradman. This will help in dealing with the problem of delay of funds in MNREGA. Funding for these new initiatives will be through the following budgetary allocations contributions to the Swatch H. Bharat Kosh funded via Swatch H. Bharat SES through commitments under corporate social responsibility CSR funding assistance from multilateral sources WASH scheme about WASH is the collective term for water, sanitation, and hygiene. Due to their interdependent nature, these three core issues are grouped together to represent the growing sector, while each a separate field of work. Each is dependent on the presence of the other. For example, without toilets, water sources become contaminated, without clean water, basic hygiene practices are not possible. Water NICEF's work in water focuses on the ability for children to access safe water, the quality of the water they can access and the journey they must take to collect it. UNICEF is at the forefront of exploring innovative ways to access water, and building climate-resistant infrastructure. Sanitation for Sanitation, UNICEF works to ensure access and use of basic toilets and ways to separate human waste from contact with people. One important area of work for sanitation is to end the practice of open defecation, and facilitate community-led initiatives to build, maintain and use basic toilets. Hygiene NICEF's work in hygiene is aimed at nurturing good hygiene practices, especially hand washing with soap. Although it sounds simple. This act is essential to prevent disease and the health of children.